Hello again, this is Philip Steiger at TheBest3D.com with Project Dog Waffle. And in this uh, quick tutorial, I want to show you some of the new features or changes coming in version 9.1 with regard to the text tool. The text tool right here, um, as you've probably used it before, uh, let's say we want to put this text here, hello world. And let's say we want to, uh, to change the size or change the font. Um, you know that you could go and click the font tool here. Well, that one now opens a new feature, a new tool, a different look. And uh, for one, you can uh, change, you can look for the font here. You can scroll through that and it will dynamically uh, show you the preview right here, but it will also show you right here in your actual selection of the text. So you can reposition that to get a better look. And as you select a different font, you'll see it preview here, you'll see it preview here. You can do more, you can also, uh, let's see, you can go here and actually look for the font by name, like Verdana. And you have the Verdana font, you can bold face it, <laughs> underscore it, uh, italicize it or, or slant it. And you can also make it strike through. And uh, one I really like is changing the size. That one is now dynamic. So you can, you can go by precise small increments one by one, or you can go very dynamically so. And still grab the corner here to uh, you know, have it uh, reveal the entire text. So that's, uh, that's a really nice feature, I think, because uh, you know, especially if you work a lot with text and you do a lot of work with buttons or uh, you know, annotations and that sort of things, um, it's going to be a, a pretty interesting feature to, to quickly change the size and to navigate through the different uh, fonts and decide which ones you want to, which one you like best and which one you want to use. So uh, that's that, uh, just a quick uh, intro. And of course, uh, you can still apply this text in a couple of different ways. Let's just review those in case you haven't seen that. Um, you can go apply the text and it will apply it at the current location and size with the current color. So if you choose a different color, let's say red, and you go and show the text box again and say, place it over here, apply the text. It's now applying it in red. Now you can also apply it, uh, so that's the default, is as plain text. So if you show the box here and change the color, but then you say, wait, I don't want the plain text, I want the fill settings. So you click on that and you can apply the fill settings. So if your fill settings is by default still the plain colors, that's that. You can have it in different modes though. You can have it, uh, you know, modify relative to the current colors back there. But you can also go into applying it with the fill patterns like uh, some sort of a, uh, a gradient. Let's go here, for instance, with a left to right horizontal gradient. And you can click the gradients panel here to, to choose the gradient you want. Uh, let's say, for instance, we want something that has this uh, horizontal um, kind of a horizon look, but uh, we go in the vertical gradient mode, there you go, and apply that. All right, so now you have that fill gradient go through the text. Now, many times you may want to have just the outline or the border of that text. So what you can do is you can, uh, again, show the text, and this time what we'll do is we'll go and uh, apply it to alpha. So click it uh, as alpha and then apply it. So what that does is it applies a selection. It, it puts it into the selection mask here. So first thing I would do here is select and store that alpha, store alpha, and then also grow it. So make it a little bit bigger. Because I mean, at this point you could, for instance, use this selection mask to cast a shadow from it under the effects, selections, effects, uh, emboss alpha or drop shadow. And uh, dropping the shadow, uh, you ad adjust a little bit how much fuzziness you want on that. And there you go. So that's one thing you can do. You can also uh, work with that selection to grow it or shrink it a little bit. This is pretty fat text. Let's go and shrink it a little bit. Shrink alpha by one or two pixels. And uh, now store this one. You, you never know, you might need this one too. So store this alpha. And you now have the, the fat one here, right? You replace, you got the fat selection or the, the outline originally here, and then you got this one. So what you can do, you can replace this one and then subtract the thin one, subtract that. So now you have um, the selection mask on the outside and the inside. You essentially have now just the, the edges uh, of the text um, still selected. And you can go and fill that again. So if you want to fill it this time with a horizontal gradient going um, going from left to right, 
what you could do is uh, use the image uh, fill and it will fill it from the left to right inside that very thin narrow margin of the text that we have still selected. Um, and so that's one way to use the text. Uh, there's a couple of other ways. Uh, you can make it go into the brush. So let's say we, we show the text box again and you say, yep, that's the text we want. Let's put that into the current brush and make that a brush. And so if you preview it, if you enable the PRV or preview, you can see that now in your brush. Uh, that is your current brush. The selection is still there. Uh, if you want to paint here, you won't see anything because it's only drawing through that selection I currently have. So let's make sure we click Control D or use the selection Clear Alpha. Then you can draw in here again and uh, paint with that too. Um, you can uh, also make this um, last uh, mode here with the text. You could uh, make this, for instance, uh, a se sequence of numbers, something like this, and make sure it's big enough so it doesn't have to wrap around. The box is big enough, that is. And now, instead of making this a brush, like so, right? we just saw that earlier, um, you could uh, make it opaque, first of all, right, and see the whole text a little bit better. But one thing you can also do now is uh, make this the, let's see, where's my text box again here, show the text, there it is, uh, make this a an animated sequence. So now we have an animated brush and you see just one letter, but uh, let's make sure we have the step distance a little bit bigger, there you go. So when you click one and then the next one, it goes, it advances to the next uh, series, right? So so you can go and, and paint with that in a, in a number sequence. Which is fun if you if you want to create some sort of fancy counters or animated number schemes, uh, some sci-fi techni techno stuff. Anyway, so that's a, a quick look at the new font lister with the dynamic sizer. Um, I think that's going to be a really great feature to just work with text uh, a little bit more elegantly, a little bit faster. And um, that's that. Thanks for watching.